Uh, it started out um, uh, in the late 90s when our parents found a solution to an everyday problem um, at our pig farm. Um, they were constantly cleaning the stalls for the pigs and found, uh, found the solution um, that, uh, why not rotate the floors underneath the animals, slowly, slowly in programmed interval so that we can automate, automate this, this uh, um, manual work that mm. just, there's no stop to. Mm. Mm. We're brought up on a pig farm and the, the moving floor project uh, was sort of our sibling in growing up. And uh, then uh, we, we decided to study and, and work and travel abroad. And, and at a point, our, our father urged us to come back to Sweden and uh, to start commercialize uh, uh, the products. Uh, when the the heaviest of the um, development work was done, and so we've been working now with this for uh, more than ten years. The agricultural uh, business actually stands for twenty five percent of all the greenhouse gases globally, and due to um, the growing global population, um, we need to double the food production by twenty fifty and at the same time reduce the negative environmental impact by 50% in order to, to reach the two degree uh, goal set in Paris. So we're working within an industry that drastically needs to change. And that's where moving flo floor uh, can contribute. Um, with our technology, we can reduce the water usage by 100%. We can reduce the greenhouse gases emissions up to 19% per kilometer uh, produced. And we can also lower the, the antibiotic consumption. Uh, actually, in the beginning, our father was um, very determined uh, to improve the hygiene in the barns to solve the antibiotic uh, consumption. So that was really his, um, his main uh, goal. But uh, then as the technology evolved and developed, um, he realized that uh, we actually, uh, have the, the technology is actually a clean tech solution. So it all depends on also uh, where in the world you are located. Um, in, for instance, in China where water scarcity is a big issue and the current system used, uh, demands up to 170 liters of water per pig per day for daily cleaning out, then of course our technology saving 100% of that water uh, makes a huge impact. So um, we, we have realized that uh, different uh, geographies and different technologies, um, like compared technologies um, can, can really um, and be improved by by the use of moving floor. It, 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 it boils down to margins in the end, right? So you, you have the pigs, you feed the pigs, and what you get out in the end is, is your profit. So uh, it's extremely important to, to um, maintain a, 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 a good growth rate and that can be done by avoiding the, the occurrence of, of subclinic disease. So we see that's what we think is a key. If we, when we keep the animals in a very hygienic environment, um, they seem to be converting. They need less feed to, to grow. So that's the main uh, contribution when it comes to the carbon footprint is not compensating uh, lacking hygiene with with more feed or antibiotics for that for that matter so so the average payback um time is three years uh, re regardless of um, of dairy farms or, or pig farms mm -hmm. 
Uh, looking at, uh, to begin with the pork industry, uh, globally, um, China is huge. Uh, every second pig normally is in China. And um, um, we plan to grow on, on these markets, um, that China, but also Brazil, uh, hopefully US and obviously Europe. Um, that's where we where we see our main gro growth potentials um, at the moment, uh, and we want to do that uh, through localizing our um, assembly and production. So we'll we're starting uh, joint ventures, um, bringing a disruptive product to the market. We need strong ambassadors, um, so we will. Um, establish these partnerships with strong ambassadors, uh, localizing production and setting up demo farms. And that is our scale up plan. Um, well, we started off in 2020 um, by signing up um, a joint venture in China with a local partner. So our plans for 2020 was uh, quite grand. Uh, we were to to uh, to start the um, the local production and sales in China at the beginning of the year. Uh, of course, these plans has been postponed, uh, but we have been working very actively to um, uh, to to look for other opportunities and um, uh, other markets um, where, where we are active, such as in in, uh, in Europe and also. Um, Canada and uh, so um, so we think that the year has been turned out quite well uh, in the end and mm -hmm. uh, we also see that the COVID situation has um, increased the awareness uh, of our industry and really um, enhance the, the interest uh, for for animal husbandry and, uh, and hygienic conditions. Um, actually, 75% of, of all the um, pandemics um, originate from animal husbandry. Uh, and this is um, highly correlated to the lacking hygiene in the, in the big barns. So we see that there is actually um, the, the positive side of this in this the really, really uh, sad, um, sad COVID situation is that people are now aware of the, of the fact that the in our animal industry needs to change. We need to improve the hygienic uh, conditions in order to, to prevent uh, epidemics. Okay, well, I want to wish you best of luck and congratulations again, Peg Söderberg and Katja Lindvall, to the International Women Entrepreneurial Challenge Award. Uh, you will be joining uh, 35 women that will uh, receive this award this year. And um, it's a great group of over 300 women that have received it since uh, 2012 seven when it would start it. So I'd really, congratulations, you're in a great network of women that want to scale up internationally and